If you are trying to make it as an animator, probably exceptional animation and texturing skills may not cut it alone if you want to create a work that leaves a long-lasting impression. So to truly stand out, you also need to pick a render engine that can get the best out of your creativity. But let's face it, who has the time to test every render engine out there in our fast-paced world? So in today's video, I'll be going through the best render engines for animation according to the people who use them and the community of CG artists in general. And we're gonna mention their features and which one would be the best according to your needs. Before we begin, let's play a little mind game. When I say 3D animation, what is the first thing that pops into your head? Probably Pixar, I would say. That's why I think RenderMan is one of the most qualified render engine in this regard. It was created back in May of 1988, which was a long time ago. So this render engine supports multiple ways to render a scene. And the method you should use depends on many things, but most importantly, on what project you are working on and what effects you are trying to achieve and your hardware at the most basic level. RenderMan has two main tricks under its sleeves. First is offline rendering, which is what artists use it for. But then there is also interactive rendering, which provides a dynamic system to continuously update a render, such as moving the camera around and changing the settings, adding or deleting lights, material editing, and so on. This can be very useful for animations since you can keep an eye on how things are moving and make changes on the fly. The engine is capable of creating both photorealistic and stylized looks, which allows you as an artist to come up with some of the most versatile and unique images in computer animations. I mean, just take a look at the endless list of productions which has been a part of, like Cars, Soul, Ghost in the Shell, and Spider-Man, just to name a few. It does so by offering the best of the two worlds. From one side, it offers physically based shading which allows the engine to produce high quality and realistic lighting with minimal setup, including full support for multi-bounce ray trace global illumination in addition to path tracing. This actually provides a strong balance between speed and quality. And then it goes even to another level with the addition of XPU, which is Pixar's next generation hybrid CPU plus GPU rendering engine, which was rewritten for speed and efficiency on film production assets, and it is focused on the acceleration of look development for shading artists. Speaking of shading, a core difference between 2D and 3D is how in animation you would just need to know how to color and paint to produce different stylized looks. However, in 3D, it is necessary to have a render engine that can pull off those looks. And is there anything out there that can beat RenderMan at this game? I would say not really. The engine comes with a stylized look toolset designed to deliver images that can go beyond photorealism by creating visuals that resemble cartoons and illustrations at different levels. And it is the heart and soul of Pixar if you actually think about it. The toolset includes three main stylization options, tune, lines, and hatching, along with a fourth look called canvas. It offers non-destructive tools to control outlines, in addition to creating sketch patterns and developing a wide range of unique looks, including anime and hand-drawn pen effects. But this isn't just relegated to adding mere tune effects. The stylized looks can allow artists to bring attention to different aspects of the story in the animation project, and even mix between stylized and photorealism. In addition, it features a completely new state-of-the-art denoiser from Disney Research that uses machine learning to remove noise from images with even a very low average sample and preserve complex details that could otherwise be lost. Also, the look of objects, lighting, and shadows stays consistent from one frame to the other. And if you've ever played around with regular denoisers in animation before, you have probably run into a bunch of frustration visual glitches like the annoying flickering effect, which can break the illusion of a smooth, continuous motion, which actually in turn makes it an incredible solution for any type of animation, especially for feature animation or VFX work, in addition to many other features such as the Luma material layering system, multiple sapling nodes, filtering, you name it. Now let's move to Octane. 
which is a pioneering tool and among the first to exploit the power of GPU rendering instead of the traditional CPU approach, which honestly changed a lot in rendering. Generally speaking, it is an unbiased render engine with some real-time features, which I will get into in a moment, but it is gonna be fantastic for creating realistic images with accurate light and shading. You know, this makes it a solid choice for any animation that is wanted to be realistic or hyper-realistic. Due to its unbiased nature and how everything runs by the laws of physics, plus as I said, it is based on the GPU rendering, making it 10 to 50 times faster compared to using the CPU. I think this is where Octane has an edge over the other render engines, like RenderMan for example, as it tends to render animations faster. Generally speaking, Octane works by taking geometry, any materials, lights, and other objects like volumes and instances, then it sends the whole package to your graphics card, where it loads the data into the VRAM. If it works, then great, and Octane runs at full speed. If not, it tends to use the RAM, which makes the whole process a lot slower. But the good news is that, if you have leftover VRAM, when you start the render, setting it to max can provide some sort of speed boost if you will. So if you own a good GPU and you want to produce fast animations, which will be as photorealistic as possible, Octane can be a solid solution, with many rendering options such as path tracing and PMC rendering. However, the biggest issue for the engine to me is that it may not be the best for highly stylized renders and lacks many features and capabilities when it comes to that, even though you can still get interesting results with tune shading for example. And when it comes to real-time rendering, it comes with a live viewer, where any changes to the scene are instantly updated in real time, meaning that you can edit any setting and view the results immediately. Another option that you could never go wrong with is Cycles of Blender, especially after the release of Cycles X in December 2021, also with the introduction of EV Next recently. Over the past decade, Cycles has become a solid render engine, especially for animations, with tons of artists and studios using it. As a path tracer to its core, this engine can produce photorealistic results that try to mimic and simulate how the light travels and interacts with services, which makes it a reliable choice for any animator. In fact, Blender is considered a 3D animation software, and it was created for this purpose in the first place. And as we have seen over the years, the Blender Foundation created many open movies and short movies to demonstrate its capabilities to render fully animated films, I mean short films, that look just stunning. And I gotta say, even though it may not be the top of the chart, I mean in terms of realism, first of all it is free, and it can still hold up against the other competition, however not the same can be said about stylized animation. Don't get me wrong though, it is possible to do it, but they aren't the easiest to pull out. Nonetheless, Blender and Cycles are gonna be a great combination, especially for those who don't have the budget, or those who are already using Blender. The next render engine is all about high quality and having a full artistic control. In other words, everything an animator could ask for. And this render engine is called Arnold. The interesting thing about this render engine is its ability to handle huge and complex scenes due to its memory optimization and efficiency, as well as getting you covered on all fronts with its rendering and shading tools. But to what extent really? Arnold arguably produces the most photorealistic results for the least amount of work, because it is a brute force production ready path tracer, even though it might be slower. In my opinion, the engine can get the most photorealistic animations on the list even though the competition is fierce with RenderMan. The development of Arnold came out because there was a need for a physically based production render engine that can handle very complex feature films, while at the same time efficiently render artifacts free shots with massive complexity, as well as simplifying the workflow, which includes the user experience. Well, path tracing naturally fulfilled all these cases and needs. The engine adapted an approach of path tracing that avoids the use of hard to manage and artifact prone caching and sits on top of a ray tracing engine optimized to shoot and shade billions of rays through a scene to naturally simulate all lighting effects such as soft shadows, indirect illumination, glossy reflections, motion blur, depth of field, and so on. 
The software offers many qualities, like the ability to switch seamlessly between the GPU and CPU rendering, in addition to a memory-efficient, ray-traced curve primitives that can help you create complex fur and hair animations, as well as tune shading. In combination with the contour filter feature, which is an advanced non-photorealistic solution. So, from one side, it is actually a high-level Monte Carlo ray tracing renderer that helps you deliver beautiful and physically based results. At the same time, you can get a bit crazy and why not even come with something similar to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or the look of the 90s anime. And if you want to get an even higher level of speed, the Unreal Engine is probably your engine of choice. The main attractive point of Unreal is how it balances between speed and quality. First of all, its real-time rendering capabilities are impressive, meaning that the animations are displayed instantly, or well, close to that, without the need to wait for long loading times in offline rendering engines such as Octane and RenderMan. However, is it actually as good as the other engines? in terms of quality. Well, not exactly, but it is pretty close. I mean the animations can speak for themselves. But I would say for big projects, engines such as Octane and RenderMan of course are gonna be standing out compared to Unreal. So I would say if your project is small or something quick, then Unreal is gonna be a great option. Generally speaking, Unreal provides exceptional photorealism with techniques such as ray tracing and lumen a fully dynamic global illumination and reflection system that was built to bring realistic lighting on a budget, or even for free. And even though it is not RenderMan, the stylization aspect of the engine is fairly impressive, to say the least. Also simulating the way light behaves in your 3D scene is handled in one of two ways, using real-time lighting methods that make it possible for the light to move around and interact with the rest of your objects or by using baked lighting, which is the old method of using the engine, where the lighting info gets saved in textures and assigned to your 3D objects, which can be ideal and even faster for animations where the lighting doesn't need to change. Nevertheless, the real-time light rendering is also very fast, especially in comparison to the other offline rendering engines, because it uses techniques like screen space reflections, ambient occlusion, and shadows try to give the photorealistic approximation based on what's currently visible on the screen. Unlike an offline rendering engine like Octane, which tries to achieve the most accurate realism possible. Besides, Unreal Engine offers some of the best world-building tools in the industry, along with Nanite to display an absurd amount of geometry on the screen as well as a sequencer tool to manage and edit animations, camera angles, and other cinematic elements. It is not a miraculous solution though, and it may struggle depending on your PC. However, after all, it is an incredible engine, especially if you want to render high-quality animations fast. And for free, by the way. And there you have it, guys. If you are interested in these render engines, you will probably find all the necessary links in the description. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.